Governor Robert Ray's most lasting legacy may have been his humanitarian global outreach in the wake of the Vietnam War. It was all the more remarkable, coming from the governor of a landlocked state full of predominantly white farmers. Time and again, Ray encouraged his fellow Iowans to welcome refugees and immigrants. The Southeast Asian community that we have to this very day is his legacy. He, he saved lives and he really helped diversify Iowa. We realized that Governor Ray was the, the first governor that allowed refugees um, in Iowa and, and he specifically like answer the call from you know the United States like which state wants to take a refugee family you know and Iowa you know volunteer first because other states didn't, didn't want to do it. After the fall of Saigon in 1975 Ray convinced his friend President Gerald Ford to let Iowa accept all 3,500 Thai Dom refugees so that they could keep their families and culture intact. So he brought the Thai Dom to Iowa as a group, and there are more Thai Dom in the state of Iowa than anywhere outside of Asia, which is an amazing legacy. And also, he has more influence over Indo-Chinese refugee policy than any other governor in history. I think Iowa gets this gift in being able to show other places in the world that we're, we are predominantly white here, but we're going to have open arms for our refugees and we're gonna love them, and we're gonna help them be successful. Ray welcomed another major wave of refugees at the end of the 1970s, inspired both by news reports and what he witnessed in his own travels to Southeast Asia. He also says, in 1979, I wanna bring in 1,500 additional refugees. So he helps the plight of this group called the Boat People. They were fleeing Vietnam persecution as communism is gaining a firmer hold in the late 1970s. A CBS News report in January 1979 about the boat people triggered Ray's decision to act. And, uh, and the governor, I remember him saying this, he said, well, we have two choices. We can turn our backs uh, or we can somehow reach out a hand to help these people who are desperately searching for, looking for a place where they can live. Now, no one in the world would have expected the governor of Iowa to do anything about this problem. In summer 1979, Ray and Quinn accompanied Vice President Walter Mondale to a United Nations meeting in Switzerland where Iowa became a prime example of the U.S. relief effort. And Vice President Mondale goes up and announces that the United States is going to take 168,000 refugees a year, beginning right then. And it was this incredible moment because all of the delegations, except for the Soviet bloc, the communist bloc, spontaneously stand up and give a standing ovation to this announcement. What an incredible moment of America's humanitarian leadership being recognized. All started by Governor Bob Ray on this cold night in January of 1979 when he saw people suffering people who didn't look like him, whom he never knew, and to whom many people would say, you don't have any obligation. But Governor Ray was this deeply moral man who could not turn his back on suffering people. Ray's work throughout the decade made Iowa a welcome home for desperate Southeast Asians, many of them targets of genocide. Christine's father even recruited for the U.S. military. Both her parents made their way to the U.S. in 1978 and then to Iowa. I grew up speaking Hmong and understanding Hmong, so that's a, a language that I speak, it's my mother tongue. Um, and I got really curious by asking my parents, you know, like, how did you guys come here? 
Payne was just a little girl when she fled Laos with her mother and siblings to join her father in a refugee camp in Thailand. Two, three o'clock in the morning, we, uh, my grandmother, every I woke us up from sleep, and they kind of tell us like, follow us, you know, like, follow your mom or be quiet, you know, don't, don't make any noise. And they packed like clothes in a sack for us, and we didn't know it, we just followed it. They tell us to all be quiet, and they were like, canoe, you know, canoeing us across the, the river. And then you can hear like, like gunfire to the left or something because everybody's crossing the river every night. Ray's legacy continues when you see how refugees in Iowa have put down roots, raised families, and launched careers. Payne graduated from Iowa State University and worked her way into the insurance business. I was like the only female, the only Asian, <laughs> and it was hard. And especially when you just graduate from college, you know, you don't have like network of people, you don't know any referral. As executive director of the Art Force Iowa nonprofit, Christine helps many of today's young refugees navigate a path that her own family followed in the 1970s. These are kids the same age, ages as my parents when they first came to America. Art is its own language and it can be very therapeutic and it can help with making sure that the traumas that you go through can be handled and dealt with in a way where you can be healthy and you can live well. Um, and I'm learning that in this journey and, and how to be an among American who is an activist who works with the refugee community. This job is, is just great. It, it's a true reflection and a mirror of the same or very similar obstacles and challenges and accomplishments that my parents went through.